Today we'll be channeling our inner Van Gogh and we'll be painting sunflowers. Thankfully we won't be painting 15 of them, just three, so if you'll lend me your ear I'll tell you how to do it. You only need six colors for this painting. Um, I use the Apple Barrel brand just because it's cheap and easy to find. Um, bright red, bright yellow, Christmas green, white, black, and nutmeg brown. That's all you need. I mean, you can use other kinds of paint, but you just need those basic colors, green, red, brown, yellow, white, and black. You'll need just a few brushes. We don't need a lot of brushes. Um, you'll need a detail brush, a fine detail brush. I mean, you will be doing some fine lines in this. Um, I've got a number eight coarse bristled, it's not not horse, coarse bristled, it's a hog hair. Um, this, you don't have to have this one, I like to use this one though. And you'll also need, this one you will use is a one inch chip brush. So if you don't have one of these, this will work too. If you don't have this, this will work. The, you don't need to have both, you just need one, but it's nice to have both. Um, a flat, softer bristle. This is camel hair. And a one and a half to two inch flat brush. Again, soft bristle. And I've got another detail brush here. You don't need two. You can just have one. Um, oh, and <laughs> a larger round brush. I like to use this for the flower petals. It just makes it a little bit quicker going. You can use the detail brush on the flower petals. You don't have to use the bigger round brush, but I like to. Um, you'll need paper plates or some kind of palette. I just like paper plates because they're cheap. And paper towels. You don't need a lot of paper towels. You don't need a whole roll. You just need a few sheets of paper towel. Um, rinse bowl with water and a towel old rag, whatever, to dry off your brushes with. Um, and as far as canvas, I use a 16 by 20, always. Um, you don't have to use that size, you can use whatever size you prefer. But that should be all you need for today. To begin, you're going to need your flat brush. You're going to need red and brown. Now, if you want to choose a different um, color to put on your background, um, when I did this painting in class, I had about half of the students who actually did blue for the background. Um, but I tend to prefer the red and brown color. So that's what I'm going to use for this one. I'm going to go ahead and put quite a bit on there. Now if you want it to be really dark, you can add a little drip of black. I'll show you what that's... We'll go ahead and add a drip of black. Just a little bit. You don't want a lot. Black will overpower your colors very quickly. So you don't need a lot. I've just got a tiny drop there. We're going to mix these together. I'm going to bring this down. Now keep in mind with the acrylic paint, and I know I say this all the time, and if you've watched my other videos, you know what I'm going to say, it dries darker than it goes on. So the color you see on the plate is not the color you're going to see when it's dry. It will dry a little bit darker. So always keep that in mind when you're blending colors, mixing colors. Alright, I've just got kind of a reddish brown color there. I'm going to go ahead and start from the center. I'm going to kind of just radiate out because what I'm going to want to do as I get closer to the edges, I'm going to mix in some more brown and maybe a touch more of black because I want these edges, 
the corners to be a little bit darker than the center. That's going to draw your eye inward so that your sunflowers, when we put them in, are really going to be the focal point. You can really paint in any direction. If you want to paint horizontally right here, you can. I just find it easier to go vertically with this. I mean, heck, if you want to paint circular like that, you can do that too. But. We're just covering the canvas with color right now. And I wouldn't worry too much about the brush strokes that you can see through it because we're going to be adding that, um, the brown modeling over top of that. So the brush strokes are really gonna fall into the background. All right, we've got the main main part here covered in color. Now what I'm going to do, maybe a touch of black and this brown, and I'm just going to mix more of the brown into the color mixture I already had going. And I'm going to blend it out into the corners. That's not quite as dark as I would like it, so I am going to add just a little touch of black again, just a little couple of drops. And you're going to find it darkens really, really fast. Just, I just put a little corner of my brush in that. It really darkened that. Now I'm trying to work pretty quickly because if I, if I go too slow, I'm not going to be able to blend smoothly with the existing paint that's on the canvas because acrylic paint dries really quick. Quickly. Use proper grammar. <laughs> so you do want to keep moving. And another thing you want to do is you want to keep this paint spread out. And it might seem counterintuitive, but spreading out the paint will help it to dry faster when you're done, but it also helps to keep the paint that you're working with wet while you're still moving it. So I know it sounds like I'm not making any sense, but as long as you keep the paint moving, <laughs> you're going to be able to continue to work with it. But you've got it nice and spread out like this, it also means that when you stop working it, it will dry a lot faster than if you've just globbed it on and left it. And for our purposes today, we do want this painting to dry, or the, the background to dry fairly quickly, because we've got, we've got some more work to do on this background before we can even think about putting our sunflowers in. So we want to get this part out of the way so that we can get to the fun part. One thing you may notice about the reds, we've got the red and brown in here, is it's semi-transparent. You can kind of see a little bit of the canvas through it. And that's kind of another reason why I like to put the modeling, the brown modeling over top of this, just to kind of cover up some of those um, brush strokes that you see. That really stand out when you use 
um, the red, the yellow, the brown, a lot of those colors are a lot more transparent than your white and blues and greens and black. At least in the paints I use. I'm sure they're not all like that, but. All right, we wanna let that dry. If you wanna darken your corners a little more, I mean, if you really wanna have a drastic difference in darkness from the corner to the center, go ahead and add a little more in there. That's okay. Why not? Just touch those corners up a little bit. And just remember though, the more you work the paint, the more it's gonna blend. And the more it blends, the less drastic of a difference you're gonna see. So if I keep working this corner and blending it and blending it, it's just all gonna become the same color. So if you want a drastic difference in colors, don't over blend. And this is a good po point too, where if you want to paint the edges of your canvas, the stretched canvas, you'd probably want to do that right now. You don't have to, especially if you're going to be framing it, it's really not necessary. So we're going to let that dry for just a few minutes, should dry pretty quickly, and then we'll move on and I'll show you how to do the model, the brown modeling with a paper towel. If you want to continue doing paintings with me, hit that subscribe button and you can keep up with me.